Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, let's see. Before we get started, I'm just going to see who is... I know. Did you guys hear me typing? That was funny. Before we get started, I'm just going to see who else has joined us. Oh my goodness. Ashley, I love your name. Ashley just joined the launch team. Ashley, I see you, girl. Thank you for joining. Ashley just joined the launch team. She's a queen. If you guys want to join, if you guys want to join, just go to the link in my bio. Um, one second. Guys, I literally love y'all. This is so fun. <laughs> this is so fun. Okay. Yeah, no, we are together. So many of you guys are actually typing and you're like, <laughs> it's like bonding. Okay. So the launch team, someone asked, what's the launch team? So the launch team is basically like, since this is my first book, there are only so many people that I'm going to reach. Like y'all can reach people in your Bible studies, in your churches, in your friend groups, like on your own social medias that I cannot reach. And so if you are on this launch team with me, basically, if you pre order the book, you're part of the launch team. And um, you're just going to be a part of this with me of getting this message into the world of trusting God and waiting on his timing. So if this is a message that you are specifically like walking, like needing right now, if this is something that you're walking through where you just feel like you're in a waiting season, you're struggling to trust God in a waiting season, and you're like, I need. I need like a big sister to walk through this season with, then you are going to love this book so much. And also this message you can share to your people and maybe it can help someone in your community who's also struggling in this area. So good question. I love that you asked that. What questions do we have? Like, let's just dig in. Let's just dig in. Michelle pre-ordered this morning. Michelle, you're literally incredible. What the heck? Emma Brown. Emma Brown, where are you? Emma Brown just pre-ordered. Emma Brown, you're a literal queen. Thank you for joining the launch team. Thank you for joining the launch team, Emma. If you guys want to join the launch team, just go to that link that I pinned. Go to the link in my bio. Go to that link and you guys can join. And you guys can get this message into the world with me. I will be so vulnerable, guys. Like pre-orders matter so much to publishers. They matter so much to these like big um these big stores, like the bookstores, the Barnes and Nobles, the Targets, like it matters to authors. And so if I have done anything in your life the last three years, please pre-order this book. Like literally, this is all I will ask from you. <laughs> please pre-order this book. If I've done anything, if I've done anything, if I haven't, there's just no pressure at all. There's just no pressure. If you're like, you know what? I don't want to help this girl, but I will just tell you, this is like the biggest deal. I've been wanting to write a book for since I was six years old, six years old. And so if there's any like if you can, this, this is like the best way you could bless me is doing this like legit. And I'm not, and you don't even need to do not feel a pressure to, but I think sometimes I struggle to like ask. So literally if anything I've said has blessed you in any way, please pre-order this book and go on this journey with me. Like, I don't want, I want you to be with me on this journey. I do not want to do this alone. Like I need you guys. And because the book isn't coming out for another couple of months. I wanted to give you guys the first month. You guys can have access to the first month if you pre-order. So you can literally start reading the book now if you pre-order. It's basically like you got it. Um, and then I'm really working on getting you guys the next month after you we finish this month because I just want you guys to read it until it actually comes out. Um, okay. I just love you guys. And this is me being so vulnerable and transparent. Like I know you guys... I've literally been with you guys for three years, I think. And if there's anything that I would ever ask, it is that you would pre-order this book. 
legit, legit. Um, okay. Let's keep, let's keep with the questions. And then if you guys ever go and pre-order it, like come back and join us in the live because I just want to, I just want to talk to you guys. Oh my goodness. Brandy, Brandy, where are you? Which, where's Brandy? Brandy just joined the launch team. Ashley, Ashley's from Facebook. She just pre-ordered. Ashley, thank you, girl. Okay, guys, I have this toxic trait where I sit with my leg up. I have a toxic trait. I think I've done this since I was like a child. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm so glad you guys are here. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. Leora asked, what's the book about? So the book is all about trusting God in a waiting season. So this is obviously something that a lot of you guys struggle with. I think on this side of heaven, we all will struggle with it. Um, someone asked, would it matter where I order it or is it all the same? So even if you order it on Apple books and you get it for literally $10, you still are, are that still counts. So you guys can get it um, on Apple books. You guys can get it from Target, Barnes and Noble. Like all of that is going to be in the link in my bio. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm just proud of y'all for just like trusting the Lord. Do you think 14-year-olds can read the book? Absolutely 14-year-olds can read the book. It is clean. It is clean. Jasmine and Autumn. Jasmine and Autumn. Where are you guys? Jasmine, I know. I actually know Jasmine. I literally love her. If you guys are part of the tree, you guys know Jasmine. She's incredible. Um, and Autumn, yeah, girl, Autumn, thank you for joining the launch team, sister. Thank you for joining. Um, okay. Someone asked a really good question and I just want to make sure that we answer it. I love that y'all are asking questions. The name of the book is The Joy of the In-Between. The Joy of the In-Between. Is that a cute name? Do we love that name? We love that name. Okay. Someone asked, how can I trust God's plan? If you are wondering that, how can you trust God's plan? Raise your hand. Comment, comment a honey emoji if you are struggling to trust God's plan. How can you trust God's plan? Jazzy, Jazzy's in um, J Jazzy's in Facebook. That's where you were. Jazzy, I saw Jasmine. Jazzy. Uh, Y'all literally, Jazzy's like the best. I love how we're live on like three different platforms right now. Like I don't even care. Um, and Lauren, hi Lauren. Okay. How can I trust God's plan? How can I trust God's plan? So the verse that I go to with that is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, and it's trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So let me just tell y'all, God never tells us to understand. And this is where I think we struggle because we want to understand what God is doing. We want to understand why he didn't allow this thing to work out. We want to understand why that dream died or why that door was closed. Like we want to understand. And when we don't understand, we're like, well, then I can't trust God. Right. But I think this is why we need to go to Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 when we are trusting God's plan. We trust in him because we know 
that he is good and because we know that he is God and he knows what's best. And sometimes when things don't, when things happen in my life that don't make sense and I'm like, that literally makes no sense, Lord. God humbles me because he's like, listen, it's not on you to for it to even make sense in the beginning, like in the first place. Like I never, it was never supposed to make sense. Like it's, it's not needing to make sense. What I need you to do is trust me. I need you to trust me, even though it does not make sense. And that's where we, we, that's where we practically put the word of God into practice. And we go, all right, Proverbs three tells me to trust in the Lord and not lean on my own understanding. So that's what I'm going to do in this situation, even if it doesn't make sense, because most of the time it doesn't make sense and you're not alone. Period. Period. Okay. What other question? We talk about that in the bonus series as well. Uh, Bell, where are you? Bell, thank you for pre-ordering the book and joining the launch team. Bell, I just want to shout you out. Thank you, Bell. Thank you, Bell. I'm so glad to have you in this journey with me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Bell. Oh my goodness. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are amazing. And thank you guys for being here. So many of you guys are like 14 years old. Okay. What other questions do we have? Let's talk about them. Oh, 12. We have a 12 year old here. Praise God. Hmm. So many of you guys are 14. Oh, I love you guys. That's like my favorite age in the entire world is 14. If you're 14, you're my favorite age. Okay. Yeah, let's get let's dig into one of y'all's questions. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Oh. If you want to join the team, go to the link in my bio or go to the link that is pinned and you guys can join. And then um, you will get the book. You'll get the book and you can start reading it today. Ah! Oh my gosh. Y'all are from all over different age groups. Praise the Lord. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. I'm so thankful for y'all. Truly. Okay. Thanks for patience, guys. There's so many amazing questions. I don't even know which ones to pick because they're so great. Because they're literally so amazing. <laughs> Soph says, geez, everyone is 14. <laughs> so funny. We have so many 14-year-olds. Like when I read your guys' letters, I'm like, literally everyone's 14. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. Oh, my goodness. Stop it right now. Holly just joined the launch team. Rebecca just joined the launch team. Ashley just joined the launch team. Tori just joined the launch team. What is happening? Can you guys comment? Can you guys comment so I can just shout you out? You guys are incredible. Thank you for joining and going on this journey with me. I could cry. I am going to the Send in Nashville. You guys need to go. It's going to be incredible. (laughs) 
Okay, Naomi Grace asked a really good question. She said, and if you guys want to join the team, just go to the link in my bio and you guys can you guys can join. And you guys can start reading the book today. Okay. So, Okay, Naomi Grace asked, she said, in a time of waiting, how do you handle going through it and waiting with joy? In a time of waiting, how do you handle going through it and waiting with joy? So that is a really great question. And that is what literally this book is like all about, the joy of the in-between. How do you have joy in seasons that feel completely joyless? How do you have joy when you're waiting on the Lord, when you just feel discouraged, when you just feel even hopeless? Like how do you have joy in that spot? How do you have joy? And what I have found with the Lord is happiness is real. Happiness is a real thing and happiness is dictated by our circumstances. So if you're if things are going great, if you maybe get a promotion or a cute guy asks you out or you like see that you're pregnant and you've been waiting so long, like those are moments of great happiness. Just like great happiness. And those moments we want to cherish, right? But joy is different than happiness. So in Galatians, it says that the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, patience, one of those. Anyway, but joy is one of the fruits of the spirit. It does not say love, happiness, peace, self-control. It says love and joy. And joy is something that is not dictated by your circumstances. So happiness you're going to have if you have good circumstances, but joy is different. Joy is different. So you can have joy. The beautiful thing about joy is you can have joy from the spirit of God. Have you guys ever noticed that some of your worst days, like some of your worst seasons, the Lord has equipped you with a supernatural joy that you're like, oh my goodness, how on earth do I feel this right now? How on earth do I have joy right now? How on earth can I smile right now? And so you can think and wonder those things, right? And it's supernatural and it's because it's from the Holy Spirit. And do you know the best news is that you can have access to that joy no matter what your circumstances look like. You can have joy no matter what you're waiting on the Lord for. You can have joy no matter who rejected you. You can have joy no matter what door was shut. You can have joy no matter what is happening or is not happening. You can have joy no matter who is getting blessed in your life and you feel like you're not getting blessed or you're not, you're not seeing like God answer your prayers. You can still have joy because you have Jesus. You have access to the Prince of Peace and the giver of all joy. I I swear it is so wild how God can give, give you a supernatural joy. And I want you guys, if you're in that spot, Ask the Lord to give you a joy that doesn't make sense. Be like, God, I'm in one of the worst seasons of my life. I feel like there is no hope. But God, would you give me a joy that can only come from you and that cannot be taken away by anything else, by any person, by any circumstance? Like God gives you joy. God, and and if your joy is found in God, your joy cannot be taken away. If it is found in God, it cannot be taken away, period. So find your joy in Jesus. Don't try to be looking for happiness. Ask the Lord to give you a joy that runs deep, that cannot be taken away by some by something not working out or by something not happening or being in a waiting season. You have everything you need in Jesus, period, period. Point blank. End of story. You have everything that you need in the Lord. You don't need to 
find joy in a circumstance or in something happening, or even like at the end of your waiting season, it's not like when the Lord fulfills a desire of your heart, like, yes, it's incredible. Yes, it's going to be amazing when the Lord does deliver on that desire of your heart, but it's not going to be the source of your joy. The source of your joy is going to be Jesus because the source of your joy is going to be Jesus now. And the source of your joy is going to be Jesus when that thing comes. Okay. Done. <laughs> Period. Period. Oh my goodness. Jalen just joined the book launch team. Haley just joined the book launch team. I am so glad to have you guys here. Can you guys please comment so I can see where you guys are joining from? I'm so glad to have you guys joining the team. If you guys want to join the launch team, just go to that link um, and you guys can join. Haley? Haley? Where are you? Let me know where you are and I can... I'm so glad you're joining! If you guys want to join, just go to that pinned comment and you guys can um, join the launch team. Go to, if you're on TikTok with me right now, go to the link in my bio and you guys can join the launch team and you guys can start reading the book about everything I've been talking about literally today. You guys can start reading the book. I'm so glad to have you guys here. So if you guys go to, um, you guys can find your order number. Like after you order it, your order number should be in your email. Like I think who, wherever you ordered it, it should email it to you. I'm so glad to have you guys here. What on earth? This is so cool. Oh, y'all are amazing. So the book is $20, but I think on Apple Books, it's like 10. I could be wrong, but it's a lot less on Apple Books. Oh, if you guys go on Christian Book, Christian Book had a discount on it, which was awesome. Um, okay, guys, stay with me if you're on YouTube. I think an ad's coming, so just stay with me. Um, okay, guys, I want to answer some more questions on this. But if literally $20 and you guys can join the launch team. That's like four coffees. <laughs> no way. No way. Keisha, Caitlin, Morgan and Rebecca all just joined the launch team. Who are you guys? You guys are incredible. I can't even. Can you guys please let me know where you guys are joining from? Please, please. I'm so glad to have you guys doing this with me. This is so sweet. Rebecca, thank you. I see you, girl. I literally see you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Praise the Lord. Oh my gosh, Rena, I met at Jaywalkers. Rena just pre-ordered and she joined she joined the launch team. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, you guys can pre-order the book from like all over. And if you guys want, you can get the audiobook too cuz it's cheaper and it still counts. And it still counts. You guys can get it literally right now. Oh my gosh, Olivia said, you're my sister in Christ. You're my sister in Christ, girly. 
Oh, okay. 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 This is a question we talk about in the bonus series and I'm going to talk about it here. Latavia asked, how do we discern slash hear or know God's voice versus our own? This is a huge question that I get even around like, how do I know what God's will is versus my will? Like, how do I know? How do I know? And let's get into it. First and foremost, if you are struggling with knowing God's voice, and this is something that you want to know, you want to know God's voice, would you guys just let me know in the comments? Who here is like really wanting to know the answer to that question? Who here wants to know that? Yeah, you guys want to know God's voice. You want to know the creator of the universe and if he is speaking to you, right? Crazy. So many of y'all do. So many of y'all do. Insane. I do too. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys the 411. I never truly know like 1,000 million percent if something is God. Let me just, let me just take the pressure off. I never truly know. And I think God allows us to not ever really truly know because that's where faith comes in. If we were to see God, I talk about this in this, in the bonus, but like if we were to see God, we would not need faith for something we can see. We would not need any faith for that. Part of the faith that the Lord is so pleased by, is moved by, the faith that God marvels at is when we believe in him and when we trust in him, when we cannot see him. So a lot of like hearing God's voice and knowing God's will is a lot about faith. It's a lot about faith because you're never going to 1000% know. Unfortunately, I wish... I wish we could just look up and see what God is telling us in the in the clouds and it was just like written out. I would literally love that. But it doesn't work out like that. It doesn't work out like that in my life. I'm just going to share with you guys what I know from the word of God and what I know from my own experience. So, if you want to know God's voice versus your vo- versus your voice, the first thing you need to do is you need to be in the word every single day. You're like, "Ashley, I wasn't expecting you to say that." Here's why you need to be in the word because God's voice is always lined up with his word and God's words that he wants to say to you is in his word, the Bible. So first and foremost, I know that might not sound fun to pick up a book from thousands of years ago, but the Lord wants to speak to you through this book. He wants to speak to you and have a personal relationship with you through you reading the word of God every single day. So that is the first thing. The second thing is what I will do. This is what I do. So I'm going to share with you guys a scripture that completely changed my life. And I go more into this in the bonus, but I want to share it with you guys here. So there's a scripture. It's Proverbs 16, 3, and it's commit your works to the Lord and he will establish your plans. Now, the amplified version of that verse is Roll your works to the Lord, commit and trust them fully to him. I need you guys to listen. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. Then all your plans will be established and succeed. Let me just repeat that one more time. Commit, roll your works to the Lord, commit and trust them fully to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. Then all your plans will be established and succeed. We love to, we want to hear God's voice, but we also want to cling to our own ideas for how our lives should look like. And it's almost like we like to come up with our plans and then ask the Lord to sign off on them and then ask the Lord to approve. Instead of saying, Lord, I'm actually going to first roll everything to you and surrender it all to you. 
I am first going to say, God, take it. Take my life. Take my future. Take this season. God, take it. Instead of us going, God, here's what I think, and then giving it to, to him. We say, God, I'm surrendering everything to you. First and foremost, we surrender. Then what happens after we surrender to the Lord, we now are open to hear the thoughts and the plans that he will put on our hearts. Just as the scripture says, it says, commit and roll your works fully to the Lord. Then he will cause, then he will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. So this is where I have a personal example. Some of you guys are actually here right now from YouTube. So at the beginning of 2022, I usually do a fast where I just, I just like pray and I ask the Lord to speak to me and to guide me. And I will just start the year being like, God, I surrender this year to you. Like I have no agenda for this year. I surrender it. Like you do what you want with this year. Lead me, guide me, show me the way. And in 2022, the Lord put so strongly on my heart to start a YouTube channel. And you're like, okay, well, Ashley, I know what you're thinking. How did you know that he put this on your heart? Let me just give you examples. So first I just, I surrendered everything to the Lord. I was like, God, just take this year. Like, I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the ruler of my life. I want you to guide me. So as I was in prayer, I felt the Lord be like, but just nudge on my spirit when I was in prayer, asking the father, like I was in prayer being like, God, would you speak to me? Would you show me what to do? Would you guide me? Would you show me the way? I would just like pray that, right? And the Lord was so kind. I felt like when I was praying, I just felt, I just like felt, and I had this idea of YouTube and it made no sense to me because I knew absolutely no one who was starting a YouTube channel in 2022. I actually didn't even watch YouTube at all. Like I didn't do it for a pastime. It was like, this is random, but I felt the Lord put it on my heart. And the beautiful thing about the Lord is when you surrender and when you ask him to guide you, he actually honors that prayer so much that he sometimes doesn't let you stop thinking about something until you take action on it. So what happened is I felt the Lord tell me to do YouTube and I, it made no sense to me. Cause I was like, who's going to watch my YouTube? Like who watches new YouTube channels in 2022? I'm just like trying to argue with that voice. You also know it could be God when you are arguing with the voice, right? Where you're wrestling with the voice. But what happened is that idea God was so kind and so gentle and so patient. What he did is he just laid that idea on my heart. The idea of YouTube, he just laid it on my heart so beautifully and gently. And then that idea did not go away. It didn't go away. I'd wake up and I'd feel this like tug to start doing YouTube. It was just on my heart. It was just like a lovely blanket. And it wasn't until I actually took action on that and I did like so this is this is what happened. I'm I'm just showing you guys this verse. So I first committed everything to the Lord. I said, God, take this year. Then number two, he starts putting ideas and plans on my heart, right? He's putting an idea and plan on my heart for this YouTube channel. So I'm like, whatever, like this makes zero sense to me, right? We're not leaning on our own understanding. This makes zero sense. Then three is it says, then everything you do will be established and succeed. So what happened is I step out in faith and I start this YouTube channel, right? And what is crazy is that YouTube channel literally led me to so many of you guys and it was successful. And I'm not saying this to like gas myself up. I'm saying that just shows that was literally the Lord. Like when you step out in faith on something that you feel God is leading you to do, when you step out in faith on something you feel the Father is leading you to do and it's successful, that is a beautiful way for you to see that that was the Lord to begin with. And you don't get any credit. You're like, well, literally God led me to do that. God led me to speak. God led me to that ministry. God led me to do this thing. God led me to sign up for that. God gets the glory. 
God gets the glory when it's successful. I can take no credit for YouTube because literally it was not my idea. Like God literally led me to start. And so he gets all the glory for whatever happens, right? So this is an example of listening to the Lord's voice. For me personally, in my experience, I will feel the Lord nudge me. I will, in prayer, I will feel the Lord give me ideas. In prayer, I will feel, I will feel the Lord give me like thoughts. What was crazy about YouTube too, is I remember like I would just go into random places. I was in like a coffee shop and I overheard this girl talking about how to start a YouTube channel. And I was like, that is so weird because I was just thinking that like those weird things that happen. I think God knows how to get our attention. For some of y'all, it will be movies that like he like something happens in a movie that's like, oh my goodness, I feel the Lord's giving me a revelation there. Or maybe you'll be reading a book and you feel like something's jumping off the page. Always in scripture, something's jumping off the page. Um, a conversation with a friend, maybe someone gives you a prophetic word and says, Hey, I feel this so strongly on my heart for you. Toss this if this does not resonate, but I just want to share this with you. And it's exactly what you feel like the Lord is saying. Like there are several ways that God knows how to get a message to you. So God does not want you to be confused. God does not want you to be confused. Someone needs to hear that today. He's not trying to like make something really confusing or like really, you know, oh, I hope she makes the right decision. Like, no, God is our father. He is so kind. He is so kind. And so if you ask the Lord to lead you and you're like, God, I desire, I desire to hear your voice. I pray that you would speak to me and I pray God that you would not allow me to miss hearing your voice. Like he's going to honor that. He is going to honor that. Thank you for asking that amazing question. Like, oh my goodness. If you want to hear more about that, that's in the bonus Bible study series. That is in the, if you pre order the book, you guys get access. And thank you, Tamara, for joining the launch team. Thank you, Maya, for joining the launch team. Thank you, Jordan, for joining the launch team. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad that you guys are joining. I can't believe it. This is crazy. I'm literally so glad to have you guys joining. Like what? Like what on earth? Oh my, no, we just had more people join. Oh my goodness. We literally just had more people join. No way. Oh my goodness. Okay. We're also going to join on Instagram. <laughs> I just want us to join on literally everything. We're literally joining on every platform. <laughs> okay. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep going in on questions. Okay. Let's see what other questions you guys have. Hello. We're just going to be going in on all your guys' questions around this topic of being in a waiting season. Begin away season. If you guys are here, if you guys are just joining also, thanks for joining. Thank you for joining. I'm so glad to have you guys here from wherever. Right now, we are just going to be going through some questions that you guys might have on being in a waiting season around my new book. And if you guys have not already joined the launch team, join the launch team in the link in my bio. I just pray that you guys can join and get access to the book before it even before it even is in the world. Um, you guys are going to have access to it. You'll actually be the first to, to read it, which is so cool. Um, and you'll also get access to a bonus Bible study series that I created. Oh my goodness. Okay, we just had more people join. <gasps> Julia. Thank you for joining. Julia, where are you? Comment where you are right now, Julia. I just want to see that I can see you right now. Thank you for joining, Julia. If you guys join, you guys get access to the book. Before it's out, you get access to the first 30 devotionals. You can literally start going through the Devo right now. You also get access to a bonus Bible study series that I created for you guys. Um, so. I am so glad to have you guys here. 
Oh my goodness. I am so excited. I'm so excited. I just love that we're in this together. It makes me so happy. Um, okay, yes. If you if you guys want to ask any question, like we can just like go in on some questions right now. Also, off topic, but this sweater is from Free People. And I got it in my newly order. If you guys are not a newly, I don't know what you're doing. I literally look forward to my newly order like every single month. Okay. Oh, my phone just died. I love that. So hopefully people from TikTok are joining on um, Instagram. I'm so weak. <laughs> my phone literally just died. <laughs> Is that not like just so funny that that just happened? Ooh. Okay. Who here's a teenager? If you're a teenager, let me know in the comments if you're a teenager. And if you guys want to join the launch team, just go to the link in my bio and you guys can join and get all those, those goodies. If you guys are a teenager, please let me know. So many of us are teens. We love who in Facebook is a teen. Let me know. If you're a teen, if you're not, I still want you to listen because I think that this could still be valuable. So someone asked, Evelyn asked, do you have any tips for us teenage girls on how to grow while being in a waiting season? So I love this question so much. And I go into this a little bit in the bonus series, but I can go into it right now with you guys. So... One thing that I think is the one of the most difficult things in the world is being in a waiting season is you cannot control what God does or doesn't do, right? You can't control some things. And that can feel really hard because I think as specifically as girls, teenage girls or girls in general, we love control. And you can go back to Eve, you can go back to the garden. What was Eve doing when she grabbed that apple? She was reaching for control. I think the sin of the sin that so many of us women struggle with the most is the sin of needing control and not being able to give God the control. So it can be really stressful to not feel like you have any control in your waiting season and you can't do anything. Like some of us are like, what do I even do? Like, how do I make the most of the season that I'm in? And this is where I think about the parable of the talents. I talk about this in the bonus series, but I'm going to talk about it here. This is where I think about the parable of the talents. So in the parable of the talents, there is one dude who gets, there's this like master and he looks at one guy and he says, Hey, I'm going to give you 10 talents. I'm going to give you 10 talents. And I want you to invest in these talents. And then I want you to give them back to me. And anyway, the man goes and invests his 10 talents. He gets 10 talents more. He brings it back to the master. And the master looks and says, hey, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful with what I gave you. Now I'm going to give you more. Go, like, come and share your master's happiness. The second dude, he has five talents and we give him, the master gives him five talents. And that guy goes and he invests those five talents. He makes five talents more. And the guy goes, hey, well done, my good and faithful servant, faithful with what I gave you, come and share your master's happiness. Then the third person comes and it's one talent that the master gives this person. And you know what? He's like, there's not much that I can do with one talent. There's just not much that I can do. So I'm actually going to bury it because I don't know what to do with it. So what happens is the master looks at him and goes and is so frustrated that this man did nothing with what he gave him and that he buried it because he thought that it wasn't enough. And so what happens is he then is told to be, he, he's just upset. The master gets upset with the man's long story short. So many of us in our waiting seasons, we're like, well, God hasn't given me enough. God hasn't given me what he's given that girl, or God hasn't given me what he's given that person. So I must just sit on the gifts that God has given me. 
I must just sit on the gifts that God has given me. Just sleep on them. We sit on the gift of time. We sit on the gift of you being with your family. Like you'll never have these years where you get to be with your family literally every single day if you're a teenage girl. You sit on your ability to be a light in a classroom that you won't be in two years from now. What I had to do when I was struggling with just like seeing my one talent and being like, Lord, uh, I feel like you have not given me enough. I feel like you've given that person a lot. You've given that person a lot. But like for me, I feel like you haven't given enough. And God so convicted me, said, are you going to be faithful with what I've given you? Because I only give you more when you're faithful with what I've given you. God only gives us more when we are faithful with what he's given us. Because in the scripture, we see that the one who was who made the most of what he was given was given more. That person who had the talents that was buried, he says, hey, I actually want you to give that talent to the one who has 10. Because whoever has, they will have an abundance, right? So for so many of us, we feel like we're in a paused season. We feel like our life is on pause until that thing happens that we're waiting on till we get the baby, till we get the job, till we get the friend group, till we get the man. Like, I don't know what it is. So many of us, we feel like our life is on pause. And the thing is, your life is not on pause. If you believe that your life is on pause, you're actually believing the lie that you should bury the season that you're in. You're not going to bury it though, because God's given you this season. So God literally convicted me so much when I was struggling with that. He's like, girl, are you going to make the most of the gifts that I've given you? Are you going to just sleep on them? Because God's gift, God's gifts to us come in such mysterious ways that we don't understand all the time. Perhaps the gift that God has given you in this quiet season is the gift of time. It's the gift of time, or maybe it's the gift of getting to spend time with him. Like you might be rushed to have children and have a husband. Do you realize you will never have this time where it's just you and God like ever again, where it's just literally you can just spend time with God anytime and not have to worry about anything else. Like literally it's just you and God. It's just you and God. Like you're not focused on making lunch for your husband. You get to focus on God. And I love that so many of us are married and I am so excited about that gift. That is such a beautiful gift. But don't sleep on the season that you're in because you're not in the next season. What I had to do, and I still have this list, is I had to, because I felt so out of control, I had to literally have, I made a chart. Your girl made a chart. I had one side was the gifts that God's given me. So I wrote down every single gift that I felt God has given me. My dog, my friends, my my health, my family. I love how my dog was first. <laughs> um my my work, like this is such a gift. Um my book, I mean I wrote down all these gifts. I wrote down all these gifts. And you know what I did on the other side? On the other side of that chart I wrote down how I could be faithful with that gift, how I could be faithful with having a dog, how I could be faithful with having these friends, how I could be faithful with my health, right? How I could be faithful with my family. And you know what I did? Instead of focusing on what I could not control and focusing on, you know, God, when are you going to change the chapter? When are you going to, when is the season going to end? Like all those Really, honestly, those questions are giving self-pity. Those questions are giving self-pity and we don't have time for that. We just don't. Like you can sit in that for a little bit, but after a while, it's like, let's get out of that. So instead of me focusing on what God wasn't doing, I started to focus on being faithful with the gifts that God had given me and putting all of my attention on the right side of that list. I actually want to encourage you guys to make a faithfulness chart um, and to do one side is you write down all those gifts and get specific. And like, maybe the gift is 
this time that you have with your family as you're in your teenager still, and you get to have all of this time with your family that you will not get when you're in college, right? You're not going to get that when you're in college. Or maybe it's your sweet dog, or maybe it is your health, or maybe it is your husband. I mean, whatever it is that God has given you, write down those gifts. And then on the other side, I want you guys to write down how you can be faithful with that gift. And you're going to focus this season on being faithful. And you're not going to focus on, you're not going to focus on what you can't control because you literally can't control it. There's no point to you focusing on something that you cannot control. There's literally no point to it. So you're going to be faithful. You're going to be a faithful steward. And you know what? When you get to heaven, God is going to look at you and he's going to see everything that you are faithful with. And he's going to say, Hey, well done. My good and faithful servant, well done. Well done. I'm so proud of you. That's what he's going to say. That's what he's going to say. We don't want to have any season of waiting be like God looking at us and go, hey, you wasted that season. In that season, I actually wanted you to focus on this. I actually gave you that season to focus on your family. I gave you that season to focus on your friendships and you missed it. I don't want us to miss a single season that the Lord has for us because we're so eager to get to the next season. We're not going to be those people. Okay. We are going to enjoy the season that God has for us. Point blank period. Also, Oh my, this is how I know I'm an extrovert. Like I literally think this is so fun. Guys, stop it right now. Stephanie just joined the launch team. Jakita just joined the launch team. Nancy just joined the launch team. Julia just joined the launch team. Denise just joined the launch team. I'm so glad you guys joined. I think we're going to save this live. I really think we should. I love that idea. So we'll save it. You guys can watch it later. We're going in. (laughs) We're literally going in. Okay, what other questions do we have? Okay. And then this is something that I also feel is so strong. So someone asked, what do I do? Pearl asked, what should I do while I wait for my prayers to be answered? So a lot of us are praying and we're like, um, okay, I prayed and God didn't answer in the timeline that I wanted him to. And you just can be like, What do you do there? You know, what do you do while you're waiting for God to answer your prayers? And you know what's crazy? Sometimes I think, this is another thing, and this is a, this might not be what you're expecting me to say, but I think sometimes God, and I'm not God, so I don't know this, but I think sometimes God tests us in the waiting to see if we follow him for what he gives us, or if we follow him because he is enough, period. So I had to get to a point in many of the things that I felt like I was waiting on the Lord for. And I had to be like, you know what? If this never happens, is God enough for me? If this never happens, is God enough for me? Is God enough? Is he just being him and him being in my life enough. Because sometimes we're only following God. If And this is where I had to really, like, I'm only telling you guys this because I had to come to this realization. I was like really frustrated with God. And I was like, re- yeah, I was just really frustrated. I felt so distant from him. And I didn't realize that I almost felt like God had an obligation to do something that I was asking him to do. 
And that if he didn't, then that means that he wasn't good and he wasn't faithful and that he didn't love me. And that was like literally not the truth. God had to get me to a point where it was like, he's like, girl, are you going to follow me for what I give you? Are you going to follow me for me? Like we don't follow a God. We don't follow God based off of what he's going to do for us. And if we only follow God based off of, based off of what he's going to do for us, then low key, we're only serving ourselves because we're still Lord of our lives, right? And we'll go to any God to give us what we want. And the beautiful thing is, I think God gets us to a point where maybe he doesn't answer our prayers or maybe he doesn't, he doesn't do what we want him to do because he wants us to see like, can I be enough for you? Can I be enough for you? Because we think that this joy, I, this is a huge part of the book, guys. Like we think that what we're looking for, this joy that we're, that we're looking for, this like peace that we're looking for, this like completeness, whatever it is, we think it is found in a season of life or in God doing something. And I will tell you guys that when God makes a dream come true, it is incredible. And we get to rejoice. Like it says, um, a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Like that, we just get to rejoice when amazing thing ha things happen and God makes miracles happen and God makes mountains move. And when he just like does what only God can do, we get to rejoice in that, right? We get to rejoice in that. But we don't, our faith is not rooted in, in, what God can do for us. Our faith has got to be, you know what, God, I love you and I will serve you to the day I die, no matter what you do for me, no matter what you do for me. And I'm not focused on serving my myself. I'm focused on actually laying down my cross and serving you. And that's where that surrender comes in. Like so many of us, we're afraid to surrender. We're afraid to be like, God, I'm going to give you the, dr the dreams and the desires of my heart. And in that surrender, we have to accept if they never happen. Right? And that's scary. That's super scary. We have to surrender. But God is good and he's faithful. And in him, we find everything that we need. In him, we find everything that we need. You do not need to go to a season or a circumstance or a place or a person to feel the joy that you could only get from the Father. I think God wants us to find our all in him, our joy in him, our peace in him, our confidence in him, our worth in him. We want to find, he wants us to find it all in him first, because then we are ready. Then we are ready for what he wants to bless us with. If we are looking to that circumstance and that season of life to feel the joy that only we can get from him, then it's backwards. He wants us to be rooted in him, finding our identity in him, founding our finding our joy in him before we look to that in another circumstance. And then what happens is when your joy is in Jesus, when your hope is in Jesus, when your peace is in Jesus, when he is everything that you need, that when that miracle comes, it will be beautiful and it will add to your life but it will not complete you and it will not, you will not be worshiping the gift. You're still going to be worshiping the God of the gift, you know? So I think so much of surrender is laying it down and going, you know what, God, like you're enough for me. And I'm going to continue to believe that you can move this mountain. And I'm going to continue to pray and intercede that you can do the impossible. And I'm going to continue to have hope that you can do it because your word says that like without faith, it's impossible to please you, right? God's word says without faith, it is impossible to please God. We want to believe. We want to have faith. I'm not telling you to stop believing for the things that God has put on your heart. You are going to keep believing for the things that God has put on your heart. Absolutely. And that is what I need you to do. But in the meantime, as you are believing, I want you to 
find everything that you're looking for in him. Because like, let me just tell you, there is no joy or peace or comfort that can be found in like that's actually lasting, that can be found on anything on this earth, that can be found in money, that can be found in success, that can be found in you getting the job offer or you getting to that college or you getting, you know, to be with that person or you getting to be with that friend group. Like those are all good things. And there may be tastes of the glimpses of heaven, but they're not heaven itself, right? God is enough to fill every, everything in you. Like he's enough for us. Like him being him is enough and everything else is an add-on, like literally everything else. And when we get into that mindset, it's like everything else is an add-on. We're not needing anything to fulfill us. We're not in, in lack of any sort because we don't have something. We are able to be complete and whole right now in Jesus name. So I pray my prayer for every single person that is on this live is that you guys would find your joy in Jesus. It sounds so cliche, but if you've never felt the presence of the Lord, the peace of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, I want you to just ask me like, God, you know what? I'm sick of waiting for that joy. I'm sick of waiting for a circumstance to happen for me to feel this peace. God, would you just be so kind to bless me with this joy and this peace right now? Like right now, God, in this season. And then watch how he honors that request because in him, there's fullness of joy. In him, there's fullness of joy. You don't have to go to anything else. You don't have to go to a different country. You don't have to go to another place. Like right now, where you are in him, there's fullness of joy. Beautiful, amazing humans. You have stuck with me. Some of y'all have stuck with me for literally an hour. I cannot believe it. Let me just shout out some people. We have, oh my gosh, so so many of you guys. I'm so glad you guys are doing this with me. Praise Jesus. We have, I just want to shout out Denise, Grace, Diane, Gabriella, Yvonne, Jessica, Desiree, 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 and Tracy. Thank you guys for joining the launch team. If you guys haven't joined the launch team, be sure to go to the link in my bio, join the launch team. You guys can get, you'll, you'll be able to read the book before anyone has any access to it. And also you will be entered to win extra entries into the passion giveaway. And you will also, you will also be given access to a free bonus Bible study series which we go in on everything that we talked about in the, this live. We have sections in the Bible study series. That's why I like chose those questions to go over is because we just went into those. So if you guys want to dig in more to those questions, join us. I am so thankful that you're here. I just pray that this message gives you so much hope in the season that you're in. And I'm going to save this live. So be sure to share it with a friend who you felt like would really just be encouraged by this message. We're going to be talking so much about waiting seasons over the coming months. I just love you guys so much. It was the best, best weekend ever. Okay. Wow. I just am. I just like loved talking about this with you guys. And if anything was convicting, like literally the Lord is so kind and he loves you so much. And he just wants you to know that he cares and he is with you and he has not abandoned you. Okay. I love you guys. I hope that you guys have the best day ever. And thank you for going on this journey with me. Mwah! Bye guys. Bye beautiful humans. I'm so, so grateful for y'all. Thank you for being here. Oh my goodness. You guys are amazing. Some of y'all have been with me for the whole hour. So just like, praise God. <laughs> I hope that this really, um, this encouraged you. The Lord sees you and he loves you and he's enough. Like truly, if I can tell you anything, like he is enough to fulfill everything in our hearts. Like he is so, so good. And he cares about you so much. I love you guys so, so much. Oh my gosh. One hour later. Bye guys. Mwah.